Good morning guys, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. If you're a returning subscriber, as always, guys, welcome back, and I do appreciate the support. Well, guys, uh, the four people that uh, were charged with the murder of the two Kansas moms who are as follows. Veronica Butler, age 27, and Jillian Kelly, age 39. May they rest in peace. These four people who call themselves God's rejects, more like Satan's soldiers. But anyway, they came and made their first appearance in court today. And uh, I'm going to show you guys what happened. And uh, these people are, you can see by the way this is set up, these people are set up and, and smoking these people. Now, uh, the family members were there from uh, the victims, Miss Butler and Miss Kelly. So there was a lot of them there and a lot of craziness went down. And uh, this news article is going to tell you everything that happened today. Take a look. We weren't allowed to have our cameras or phones inside the courthouse. I want you to look at this video. You can see all of the suspects being brought out of the courthouse and put into police cars one by one and taken back to the jail. Um, bond was denied for all four suspects. Uh, and they all uh, but one said that they had the money to uh, afford a private attorney, uh, but none of them had found an attorney at this point. It was very, very emotional, Marnie. I don't think I've ever uh, been in a court hearing quite like it because it was a very, very small courtroom and you had the victim's family members uh, take up three of the rows of the courtroom. Uh, and some of them actually had to be physically held back during the hearing. They were sobbing and trying to lunge uh, at the suspects as they were brought in and other family members had to hold them back. Uh, and then they were actually saying things to the suspects during the hearing. They weren't actually shouting, but I mean, you could hear exactly what they were saying. They called uh, Grandma Tiffany um, Adams, who uh, of course uh, is believed to be the orchestrator of these murders. Uh, they called her uh, an effing bee. Um, they called the other man a, a bastard um, and a lot of expletives, uh, uh, a sorry ass piece of S word, um, which was just interesting to hear in a courtroom as uh, as the defendants were brought in. Obviously, they're very, very emotional uh, about what happened. I would say about maybe two dozen family members inside the courtroom uh, as the hearing uh, went on. But again, the, the headline here, bond denied. Uh, and uh, and they will be back in court sometime next month, Marty. You talk about an emotionally charged situation. Um, I, I feel for those families to be in that courtroom, see these uh, people for the first time. Again, just drawing folks' attention to the screen. This is the first time we are seeing these four suspects publicly as they walk into court. Brian, how did the judge handle uh, that interaction between the suspects and these family members? Let me just quickly, Marnie, because because court just ended, and this is. I'm I'm sorry. Do you mind if we talk to you real quick, ma'am? Uh, uh, you're Veronica's fine. aunt, right? I'm sorry. Are you Veronica's aunt? I am. That's one of the, the victims. I I'm so sorry. It was I was just telling Marnie, our anchor. Uh, first of all, I'm so sorry for everything you've been through, and it, just that courtroom was so small. I can't imagine you guys were just so close to them. I mean, what was that like? You know, to to hold my brother back from. Jumping, you know, um, there's just too many emotions, so much anger. Um, I just, I don't understand how somebody can hate somebody so much that you want to kill them. My niece did not deserve that, and neither did the young lady with her. She was just there to help her. We didn't deserve this. Our family didn't deserve this. Yeah, and they were just emotionless, the the defendants, when they were brought in. I mean, yeah. did you know them before this? No, no, we don't know them personally. No. It's okay. We're yeah, good. thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, as you can see, Marnie, I mean, um, again, I, I've never really experienced anything quite like it because it was such a small courtroom and, and you had family members having to hold back other family members trying to actually go after the suspects, which... 
in light of everything they're going through and having to be so close to these um, people accused of such heinous crimes, you know, you, in a way you, you, you can't really blame them. You can kind of understand just how raw the emotion was. I think each and every one of us sympathizes with what they're going through and the nightmare uh, that they're living. Brian, what's, what's next now that this hearing has taken place? What's the next step in, in the court case? So there will be a hearing on May 15th. Uh, that is when they will have a status hearing and, and um, several of the suspects will appear with their new lawyers that they will be hiring. And remember, um, many of these suspects, Tad and, and Grandma Tiffany in particular, these are wealthy people from what we can tell. They own a lot of land. They have a lot of influence in this community. They have a lot of business connections. Uh, so we would presume they're going to get, you know, high dollar defense attorneys uh, to represent them because, you know, they, they clearly have the resources. I'm wondering, Brian, as in a lot of these hearings, it's early on, right? Bond is set, um, not guilty pleas are usually entered. Any evidence provided? Is there anything new we learned about uh, the evidence prosecutors had that led to their arrest today? Not really in particular. What happened is they brought each suspect in one by one. Um, so they kind of went through the same process uh, four times and read the charges. There weren't any new details that we didn't already know from the police reports. Um, but th the main point was just to read them their charges, uh, to see if they were going to hire a, f a private attorney. Um, and, and really, again, what I walk away just thinking about is just um, seeing all those family members. Uh, and, and that was just really quite a moment, just the, the raw emotion. That's, that's the details of what happened in a first court appearance today. And... Uh First thing that stood out to me was if you looked, a couple of them looked like they were smiling going in there, and which I think was messed up. But I think these people are going to get what's coming to them. This crime right here struck that uh, area. And I said these people got a lot of uh, influence and to clear up a couple of things. Because I watched some, a couple of other news articles. The one person that said all three of them said they could pay for uh, lawyers. The one person, this is intriguing to me, that said they couldn't afford a lawyer was Cole Earl Twomley's wife, Cora Twomley. How can you afford a lawyer and your wife can't? That, that sounds strange. I mean, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, does that make sense? Like, how would you get representation and your wife can't and y'all, y'all a team? Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is you heard, they said these people was pissed. The, the victim's family was mad. They was cussing them. And uh, a lot of people uh, jumped up to fight him. They said the main person that jumped up to act the fool with him was the uh, Veronica Butler's father. So he was there and they said he was quiet about it, but he jumped up and he had to be restrained several times. Him and they said name somebody else, but they didn't say what, what the relative was. But um, these people are devastated. And this is a devastating crime. This woman locked up. These soldiers of Satan or whatever they have, they said they got influence. They got a lot of land. They can sell stuff off and, you know, but I mean, it shouldn't even have to come to this. That's the big thing. Like this, this whole thing, it shouldn't even have to come to this. All this over visitation of a child and his mother. We talked about this already, guys. I just wanted to share a little bit with you guys about what happened in court today. Because, I mean, it's a sickening display. Let's, let's call it for what it is. This woman made this fight hers. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times when people have influence in their town, whatever little world they live in, where they have power, they feel as though that stretches outwards from where they are. And they get these egos and they get fanatical. This is proof of it. It is. She must not have liked the way the woman talked to her. You know what I'm saying? She deserves the respect she gets in that town. It was all about power. It was a power play. I'll teach you not to talk to me and mess with me. You don't know who you're messing with. And this lady took it all the way to the end and it cost her everything. It was never about the grandchildren, in my opinion. It was about power, a struggle, control. And she lost the battle. Her, her dumbass boyfriend, you know what I'm saying? Ted Callum, Tad Callum, and uh, the Twombly couple who was dumb enough to follow into him. I mean, they had influence, favor for a favor. Either way, they all burning, we're going to burn in hell, so it don't matter. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Reason Channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. They say they want justice. These people look, they, they, I would push for the death penalty. But for some reason, the way the system is, always failing people, they'll probably get life in prison. Some people find that just, I don't.
Smoke them like they smoke these two ladies. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.